What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're having a great day. Welcome to the first episode of the Roblox Scripting Guide. Throughout this guide, we're going to be going over all of the basic fundamentals of Lua and Roblox so that you guys can understand how to start off learning and scripting. By the end of the script, we'll hopefully have a fully functioning obby, which you can understand how this knowledge can pertain in the making actual games with Roblox. How these videos will be structured is at first, we'll be going over the theory of these specific things. So today's concept is going to be variables. We'll first talk about what variables are, and how they're used and then later in the video we'll actually use them in game to make it a little bit more interactive so that you guys can follow along and actually start to use them and see how they work in game i feel like that's one of the best ways to actually learn is to understand what we're using and then actually use it in game so we can really see how these things can be used throughout what we want to do before we get too deep in this video i do have a patreon if you guys would like to support me go check it out link down below in the description additionally if this video does help you guys out make sure you smash the like button and if you're new around here and you guys want to see some more roblox scripting guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you have any questions leave a comment down below or feel free to join the discord so you guys can ask for help or help other people link down below in the description as well one final thing i highly recommend that you guys check out my roblox studio guide videos because that explains a little bit more of the roblox studio side of things and how to control and work with different things there should be a card at the top right that you can click to watch that and then return here and let's just get into it so how we're going to start the series off is by actually going into the roblox studio going up to new and clicking classic base plate okay so so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the workspace, select the base plate, and then modify it a little bit. We're actually going to make it really small, and sort of what we're doing is making a base plate of an obby. Like I said, I want to demonstrate how you can actually use this knowledge that we're going to be learning in today's video and actually make a game out of it. So we're just going to kind of make a simple obby and use these as examples as we're learning. We're going to make a little spawn zone right here. Let's go ahead and name this spawn, and then let's also insert a spawn point as well, and then we will just throw that right over here. All right, now let's go ahead and test our game and make sure that everything works completely fine. Okay, yeah, everything's working great. So now let's go ahead and make a folder. We are going to name this jumps and we are going to insert a part into this folder. Now that we have our part, let's bring that uh, over to here and we're just going to make a basic little jump real quick. Okay, so now that we got that kind of set up where we wanted to, let's rename this jump and then let's also make sure that this is anchored so it doesn't fall down. And that's exactly what we want. Now let's actually get into scripting. So go over to your jump, hit the little plus icon, and then you can type in script to find the script and add a script directly to your jump. So now let's go over and talk about variables. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create some variables to show you guys, and then we'll talk about exactly what they are. First, I'm going to make a variable called string, and we're going to give it a string value. We'll make a local number variable and give Give that a number and we'll make a local boolean variable and give that a boolean value for right now just completely ignore the local part it's going to be a little bit confusing but we'll get to that towards the end so think of the first part this is the first part of the variable for the most part so this part of the variable is the name of the variable think about variables as containers of information so this right here the name of this container is string string is the container and what we're equaling it to we're putting an equal sign and we're equaling that to a value or information so string string is now holding string value the information so if we open up this string container what we would find inside of it is actually string value now if we look at the variable named number we can change the name of the variable to anything we want to if we want to name it this is a number variable that's what the name of this variable would be the value doesn't change though because we didn't change the value if we want to change the value or the information that the variable is holding we actually have to edit the thing on the right hand side so how this is 10 we can change it to 100 and now this is a number variable the name of this variable the information that it's holding is now 100 instead of being 10 let's go ahead and change that back to number though to keep it as simple as possible so you might be thinking well what's a string what's a number and what's a boolean these are actually different types of data that variables can hold so a string is basically a common sentence or a combination of words let's make a sentence so this is a sentence now as you can see the sentence is actually wrapped around quotation marks now what happens if we remove those quotation marks well we now have an error so when you're making a string you're going to wrap that around quotation marks and that's how lua will identify that this is a string now a number is literally just a number the only thing that you can include in a number variable is actual digits or numbers so it can't have a common 
dominant like how you would normally do for separating large numbers and making it easier to read. If you do want to make it easier to read though, you can actually have underscores. These are sort of replacement for commas. If you're making really, really big numbers, this will make it easier to read. You might be thinking, well, could I just surround this in quotation marks and it'll still be a number variable? It'll still be a variable, but this will actually be a string variable because we wrapped it around in quotation marks. So if you're making a number variable, you don't need to wrap it around quotation marks or that'll actually become a string variable. And then finally, we have a Boolean. Now, Boolean actually just means either true or false. It cannot be 100. It cannot be a string. If you make it into a string, it's going to be a string variable. We're going to give this either true or false because that's all that a Boolean can ever be. Now, remember how we said these are just containers. You can think about these as just holding information. So number simply holds 100. String simply holds this group of words right here. And Boolean simply holds false. We can use the function called print and then we can put whatever variable that we want to in it. So we can put string. We can do this again. So print and then we can put number in it and we can do print and we can put Boolean inside of it. And then once we start our game and look down at the console down here, we can actually see that it printed out this is a sentence 100 and false. We can also click on that and we can see what actually printed that out. So the line on the script actually printed that out. So remember, these are containers and these are the values that are inside of those containers. You might still be wondering what does local mean? Don't worry, I haven't forgot about that. We'll get to that in a little bit. Let's try to actually use this within our game to see where we would actually use this when making a game at. So I'm gonna delete all this. I'm going to initialize another variable by typing out local, then the name of the variable. So we're gonna name this variable part. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in equal sign so that we can assign a value to the variable. We're gonna type out script, dot parent. Now, if you guys didn't watch my Roblox Studio series, you guys might not be familiar with script dot parent, but when we say script, we're referring to this script right here, the script that we're writing code in. And when we say parent, we're actually getting a property of this script, which is the parent property. So if you look at the parent property, you can click on script to see all of its available properties. Like the name property is script. If we change the name of this script to test script, the name property changes to test script. So we're actually getting the parent of this, which is jump. So now what we can do is we can type out print and then we can type out part and then we can actually get a property of the jump part. So let's actually rename our variable as well because it's always good to be as clear as possible with your variables. The variable that we're making is the jump part because we're assigning it to the jump part. So let's go ahead and click on jump and let's see all the different properties there are. There's brick color, cast shadow, color, material, reflectance, transparency, name, parent, and a bunch of others. So rather than actually printing right now, let's make a few more variables. Let's say local jump part name equals jump part dot and now we can see a list of all of the different things we can do with this so all of these like little blue icons are referring to properties we can see a bunch of them there as you can see there's name so we're going to go ahead and use name click that and hit enter or you can literally just type out name we'll also do jump part color equals jump part dot brick color. We could also rename this to brick color as well. And then we can go ahead and print all that out. So let's go ahead and print out the name and print out the jump part brick color and start our game. Upon starting our game, we're going to see jump and medium stone gray printed out. So if we go ahead, workspace jumps, jump and look at the brick color, the brick color is medium stone gray and the name of it is jump. So that's exactly what we wanted. So another thing we can do is we can actually change the value of an already made variable. So let's say for instance, jump part name. We don't exactly have a particular reason to change that right now, but let's just go ahead and change it anyway. So as you can see, we're still just gonna print out the jump part name and the jump part brick color as soon as the game starts. But let's go ahead and say jump part name. So right here, we're taking the variable from above that we already created, and we're just gonna equal that to new name. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to print the variable, so jump part name, and we're gonna start the game. Upon starting the game, we see jump, medium stone gray, and new name. The reason that we see new name is because after we printed it once, we actually changed the value of this variable to new name, and then we print it once again. This might be a little weird because one, we're not seeing local here, and the reason that we're not seeing local is because if you use local, you're actually initializing a brand new variable. We don't wanna initialize a brand new variable, we wanna change the value that this variable already has to something Something different for this example. You're actually able to change a variable to anything. It doesn't have to be the same thing. So for instance, jump part name is actually a string variable. We can just change it to a number variable if we want by just setting it to a number. So there we go. We can see 11 was printed out. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is try to explain the difference between global variables and local variables. So let's go ahead and delete everything that we have so far. Now let's go ahead and initialize a new variable just called test equals test. 
Now I'm going to make an if statement, which is going to be like the next episode. We're going to cover what if statements are, but I need to make an if statement to actually demonstrate what global and local variables are and the difference between the two. So now what we can do is we can print out test and we have no errors, right? Let's go ahead and say if true, then and enter. And now let's say local X equals one. Now let's go ahead and try to print out X. We're actually getting an error here and the error says unknown global X. The reason for that is because local X equals one is actually within this little code block right here. So since print comes after the end statement, print has no idea about this X variable because it was created within this code block right here. What we can do though, is we can actually say print X inside of here. And now this print statement understands X because it's within the same exact code block. Now let's say that we don't want to have that print statement in there, but we want to make a variable with inside of this code block which is sort of unusual either way though this will show what global variables are we remove the local and now we just have x equals one within this little code block right here as you can see that error went away because it understands that this is a global variable and the data from this global variable can be passed outside of this code block into this code block right here and the data from this variable can actually be passed outside of this specific code block and it's able to be found by this print statement right here another thing is remember how we initialized test up here well, we can actually modify test in here and set it to a different value. So at first it's going to equal test. And then if it's true, it's going to equal one. And then we can actually print it without having any issues. So let's go ahead and print test right there. And then we'll print test right here, start our game and see what happens. So as you can see, at first it prints out test. This print statement prints out test. And then the second print statement actually prints out one. So we modified this local variable, which was initialized up here inside of here and then printed it out once again. The reason for that is because where the variable is created matters the most. Okay, I'm gonna make one more code block just to better demonstrate how the code block sort of works so you can get a better understanding. Local x equals two, four, local x equals four, and then I'll also initialize a variable in here as well, local y equals two. And now let's go ahead and try to print out every single variable that we have. So we have test, we have y, and we have X and let's also try to print that out in here as well. So I took a picture and I made some squares to make this a little bit easier to understand. So imagine this one green square as one specific code block. And then the two yellow ones are two separate code blocks. So if we check out the first statement, this is one completely separate code block. As we can see local Y equals two. Then we go down and we have another code block between the if true then and the end inside of this code block, we try to print out Y and that throws an error because we're unable to access this because this is a different code block and this code block isn't inside the code block which y was initialized in but as you can see right below that we then print test and we're able to print test without any error because this code block is inside of the code block where test was created at so then at the very bottom we try to print y we're unable to do that because this code is outside of the code block where y was created at and we're also unable to print x because we're outside of the code block where x was created at but we are able to print test because this print statement is in the same block of code where test was also created created. So if we go back to here, once again, we can turn this local variable into a global variable. And now you can see that X is now able to be printed. If we put it back to local, we're going to get that issue again. If you're still struggling a little bit with understanding local and global variables, just understand that I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to always want to type out a local variable. During my time of making games, I really don't think I've ever made a global variable, at least an instance, which I could think of. There are probably instances where people have made global variables, but for the most part, you're always going to be using local and you should always get in a good habit of typing out local. Another good etiquette that you're going to want to get into is how you name your variables. So let's once again, go ahead and get the jump part. So local jump part equals script dot parent. Now you want to be as specific as possible when naming your variables. The other thing is when you name your variables, you want to start with a lowercase letter. And then for every word after the first word, you're going to want to uppercase it. So local jump part name, remember be as specific as possible. So local jump part name equals jump part dot name. Then we could do local jump part brick 
color equals jump part dot brick color. Now this might be obvious to you. You might be thinking, why are you even telling me this? Well, because you could literally just say like we did in the beginning, I think script dot parent equals part. And then you could also do local part name equals part dot name. The reason that you don't want to do this is because it's not very specific. And if you're collaborating with other people or eventually you make a team and other people are working on your code, it's going to be a little bit harder to read. And it's going to take a little bit more time to understand exactly what all of your code does. If you're as specific as possible when naming variables, it's going to make it easier for yourself when you want to review code or work on code that you haven't worked on in a long time. It'll make it quicker and easier to understand what you were actually doing with those variables rather than having to sort through every single piece of code and look at it a bunch of different ways and try to fully understand it. And if you start this from the beginning, you'll always be in this habit of trying to be as specific as possible. There are really no cons to this at all. Another thing how I mentioned, when you're actually typing out variables, you want to have the first letter to be lowercase and then all the words after that to have the first letter uppercase. There is one slight exception with this and that's actually with services. Now you don't know anything about services that's understandable, but let me show you an example of how you would create one of those variables. So all the services are pretty much all these things over here. So we have the workspace service, the player service, the lighting, replicated first, replicated storage, server script service, server storage, starter GUI, starter pack, starter player, sound service, chat, localization service, and test service. All of these are different services. But let's say for instance, we want to get server script service. As you can see, I actually capitalized the first letter of every single word. And then we are going to actually get the service by typing this out. This is less important of the actual variable itself. It's just to show you guys that when you're doing game get service and you're actually getting a service, you should be making every word capitalized. That's pretty much the only time that you want to not follow this rule right here and make the first word capitalized as well. Apart from that, what I want to stress is consistency. What I saw when first learning how to code with Roblox and a bunch of different YouTube videos and stuff like that is people fail to be consistent. What a lot of people do is just not follow the common practices of coding and variable names and things like that. They'll do the first letter of every word capitalized, but then halfway through it, they'll do the first letter not capitalized and the rest of the first letter in each of the words capitalized, or they'll just do like all uppercase. Don't do this. If you're going to do something different and you're not going to kind of follow the common coding practices, which I really recommend you do follow them because it's best for everybody, be consistent with your work. If you choose, you don't want to follow the common format and say you want to just make this lowercase and this lowercase. Well, that's good. At least you're then sort of following a pattern and being consistent. Don't make this lowercase, this lowercase, then this uppercase and this all a bunch of uppercases because that's not being consistent at all. And that's really going to confuse people and might eventually confuse yourself as well. I definitely recommend that you follow this specific format and also be consistent. If you start that now, when you're first starting to learn, you're going to have a really good job keeping up with that throughout the entire time that you're coding. I think there's like one or two more things that we really should cover about variables before we end the video. One thing is, is that there are specific words which variables cannot actually be named. Some of the names which can't be used are things like local. And the reason for that is because they are very Lua specific. I'll put an image of all the different keywords which you cannot use on the screen right now. Additionally, you cannot have variables which the name starts with a number. So if we did want to have a number here instead, we would do one variable and that, that could work. But no, you can't start it with a digit because that will throw an error. You can also not have spaces in your variables. So if you do like test variable, that's not going to work. What you could do to replace the space is actually put an underscore. What you can actually do to replace the space is put an underscore under there so that you understand that you have two different words. I'd still recommend following this format right here, but if you want to, for some reason, you replace that with an underscore. You also should not start any variables with underscores, although you can. Some underscore words will actually be global variables used in Lua, so you don't want to start them with underscores in case you make one which is a global variable in Lua, that would not be good. And additionally, the variables are case sensitive. So this variable is completely different than this variable. And that's because this T is capitalized and this T is lowercase. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I think we covered everything that we should with variables. Hopefully it didn't get too complicated and hopefully I explained it well enough for you guys to understand everything. If you guys did enjoy this video and this video did help you guys out, please smash the like button. And if you're new around here and you guys want to see some more Roblox scripting guides, hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. Additionally, I have a Patreon. I'd recommend you guys go check it out. Link down below in the description if you guys want to support me. We also have a community discord if you'd like to come join and ask for help or help other people. Link down below in the description as well. Also, please feel free to provide me feedback and ask your questions in the comment section down below. I really do appreciate it. Anyways, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Hopefully it helps you out and I'll see you guys in the next episode.